See, I always think that there's a danger with creating something so well known, is that audiences will, will think, oh, you mean there's, there's more in it? There's, there's other bits to this piece, right. other than the bit we know. <laughs> but of course here, right. he leaves the famous bit yeah. till the end. To the very end. Uh, and uh, you know, there's a lot to sit through yeah. before that. Yes. I know there's, there's, there's a lot of pieces, aren't there, where the famous bit is at the beginning. Uh, well, perfect example is Alzo Sprach Zarathustra, by Strauss, right. who everyone knows the opening of that because it was featured in 2001 Space Odyssey. But I often love to watch the faces of people who don't know, have never seen a performance of it before, yeah. when it goes on after that. Who go, Wait a minute, sorry, I thought it stopped there. Right, absolutely. <laughs> it's just absolutely. a fanfare. No, but, absolutely. But it's, it, the thing is, of course, in this piece, it's well worth waiting for, isn't it? And it absolutely. comes in lots of different forms, but it's the, I think it's one of those moments when the basses and cellos come where you feel the audience goes, ah. Yeah. Having Nenny and Chicks as lead, we're always talking about a world that is not completely in here on Earth. And then we work with the ninth. We are actually going to have what we've been going through, especially through Beethoven's mind, before he gets into the fourth movement. He's trying to go to so many different things until he explodes in the fourth with almost angry that why why the world is, isn't a better place and then the baritone enters what's extraordinary tommy is the way that they're spaced out on yeah. the stage Do yeah. we, and actually there's a guy there that you can see wearing a face mask while now, singing while singing yeah now, this does bring up, we're going to sort of divert slightly away from Brahms to a modern day issue, which mm. is, let's face it, how orchestras dealt with what happened to us during this actually, frankly, horrible period all over the world. But this was a major problem uh, for uh, concert goers and concert performers. We can see that they're, that they're spaced but the orchestra are not. I can only assume that that's a corona thing, although I don't know, to be perfectly honest. Um, I think they are spaced a little bit wider, aren't they, the musicians? A little bit? It's difficult well, it's to nice tell. To but... fit, well, it's, and, and what does it matter, actually? Mm. It feels there is something about an orchestra and a choir on one stage mm. filling the space, filling the space with music is a big hall there. That's, that's really wonderful to go and see, isn't it? But in performance, the space does matter, doesn't it? And the audience, I think, often doesn't appreciate how difficult it can be for musicians and for singers to perform in the way they normally do, but quite a distance apart from the person next to you. Yeah. I think you, your ears, are, through a career, get used to things being in certain yeah. places. Yeah. Um, and I know, certainly with, within orchestras, some players struggled a little bit with, with it, with yeah. how they actually played yeah. when they were so much more spaced about in the yeah. uh, on the stage. Do you know the problem the main problem that I had is that in my orchestra for a while we had one stand each. So so normally we would share a stand like mm. they, they do in this in this concert. So your desk partner on my right in my case would turn the pages. I've never turned pages. <laughs> I mean, that sounds absolutely awful. Too but much I, of a star, you see. Well, no, no, it, someone well, else should well, always turn your pages. I, yes, well, it, it kind of, <laughs> I realised that actually I possess some skills, mm -hmm. but turning pages is not one of them. And because I've just never done it, because I've always sat on the, uh, on, it's just been my career uh, yeah. to, to my luck. Um, and so me suddenly having to turn pages was, <laughs> and then of course there was the major problem that everybody was turning the pages at the same time. So there was this sudden sort of dip in the, mm. in the music. So we had to sort of stagger the right. page turning. We were talking about the way that a piece is phrased and everything, and that very often is reflected on what the conductor is doing. Now, yeah. just past the bit where the tune comes in and everybody goes, ha, huh, there happens to be one of the most difficult bass parts <laughs> in the world still to this day, even though bass playing levels have, have risen unbelievably. Some of us have been left behind, but the rest of the world <laughs> has risen unbelievably. It's letter M, it's do bigger, do good, do good, do good. And of course, what also happens is that the choir are going completely nuts. And at that point, the conductor normally has saved their energy for the last round. And I think Payera is a great example. There is one moment where he stands on one foot. Mm -hmm.
Now, if you want to watch the whole concert that we were talking about, then you can do on symphony.live. But in the meantime, Tommy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please join us again for the next edition of Symphony Insiders. And until then, as they say here in the Netherlands, tot ziens.